West Ham take on Arsenal. Martin Odegaard is back, and I have a question for both of you. Mm. Is he, in current form, there's no Rodri, the best midfielder in the world? He's the most important, and I think we saw that in his absence for Arsenal. Um, I've said this for a longer time. He's my favourite non-Chelsea player to watch. He's just an incredible footballer. He can do it all, and he's got like sneaky physicality as well. Mm. And if you look at Arsenal midweek against Sporting, it was their DEFCON lineup. That's their best team. Calafuria left back, you've got Gabriel Saliba, you've got Timber at right back, the midfield physicality, strength, guile, precision in um, in Odegaard, Party, and Rice. And then obviously the front three is the front three, Martinelli, Havertz, and Saka. They're a really good team, man. And I think they showed it um, against sports in midweek. And of course, they've suffered with injuries, but Arsenal fans have been kind of derided about moaning about the injuries, and everybody does get injuries. But when you lose a player like Martin Odegaard, you really do see the effect. You saw the effect with City without Rodri. Um, I think if Liverpool were to lose Van Dijk, you'd see the effect there. Um, but this Arsenal team, that they're, they're finally starting to find the form that we saw last season where mm. they're physical, but also they're putting the ball in the back of the net. And Odegaard has just illustrated with his performances and also in his absence that, like you said, your like question asked, I think he is one of the best midfielders in the world, if not the best. Are Arsenal fans justified? Because for weeks they said, without Odegaard, this is like Liverpool missing... Van Dyke, Chelsea missing, Palmer, United missing, Bruno, mm. City missing, whoever. Um, now he's back. He got the assist for the Martinelli goal against yeah. Chelsea, which was a great ball. They beat Forest 3 0, they beat Sport in 5 1. He's had a hand in all those games and probably been the best player in all three. Well, definitely two and one half against Chelsea. Mm. Yeah, every team has that one player, don't they? Yeah. Every team has that one player that they pretty much can't go without, and Arsenal's is Erdegaard. I know I got quite a lot of heat when I said how boring Arsenal were at the beginning of the season and it's no surprise that was when he wasn't in the side. I think apart from what he does, the fact that his relationship with Bakayo Saka, mm. Saka's been a million times better the last two games than he was probably for any game throughout this season. I think he's their most important player and I think now we'll probably start to see the Arsenal that we were expecting to see at the beginning of the season. I think with City on the form that they're on, Chelsea being the unknown entity, I think Arsenal are certainly going to be the closest to Liverpool this year. What I think now is really interesting for Arsenal at this point in the season is, in a lot of ways, they can't afford another slip-up. Mm. And that's where mm. I think these games against West Ham are suddenly, instead of this being like, a, we should scrape this, because they won this game 6-0 last season, mm. and they absolutely battered West Ham. West Ham were awful that day. West Ham obviously beat Newcastle, have found their form a little bit. I didn't think they were great, but they got it done. Yeah. Um, but now Arsenal look at this and go, even a draw is could be the end of the title race. Yeah, they can't afford to draw this game. And they won't. Like you mentioned, last year they turned West Ham over. That's the game that West Ham fans were leaving at half time. And I feel like that was the final nail in the David Moyes coffin. He left at the mm. end of the season. Um, but this is an Arsenal team that are really good, man. I, I've, I've always liked this the look of the composition of this Arsenal team. They've just got the right kind of balance. I do think they could be improved by having an out and out number nine. They seem to be happy with Havertz leading the line. But if everybody's fit for Arsenal, they are one of the best teams, not just in the country, in Europe. They've got so many talented players. And you're right to point out the relationship that Odegaard has with Saka. And it was a kind of like trifecta. You had Odegaard, Saka and, and Ben White on the right-hand side. Timber against Sport in Lisbon was absolutely amazing. Mm. And he's a player that's finding his feet. I prefer him at right back to left back. Mm. If they start that back four of Calafuri, Gabriel, Saliba and Timber... I don't see how West Ham could trouble them. Defensively, they've shown that they are one of the best teams in the world. And going forward with Odegaard back, they're going to be very, very difficult to stop. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at that team and you think, maybe Martinelli out of push, but there's pretty much no weakness in that side whatsoever. I think it's going to be quite easy for Arsenal, but the West, West Ham, is a, it's always one of those games, I feel. I feel like anyone going to West Ham, I know it's obviously not the same now, it's not at Upton Park, but there's... They can always do something like you're never particularly mm. surprised. And I think the fact that they went to St. James's Park and won 2 0 in a game which I think Julian Lopetegui probably needed to win, otherwise, I think his head was probably on the yeah. chopping block. I think they'll be, you know, they have reason to be feel quite positive towards it. But I think Arsenal are just going to be by far the better team. How do they win this game? Because I was watching the sporting game, and, I, and although I do agree that Arsenal's back four is as solid as it comes, there is a little bit of space between that back four and mm. Party and Rice that. I just don't think they're covering as well as what they were last mm. season. And now I'm starting to wonder if, if West Ham can get into that space. And I don't know who will, because Carlos Salah had a really good game against yeah. uh, Newcastle, but he's not a pocket player. Mm. Um, and they were effectively using that three-man midfield just to work like dogs. And Newcastle were poor. I don't think Arsenal are going to be poor for West Ham to take advantage. But if, if they can, where, where, where do you think that happens? Well, I think you look at that West Ham team and there is some serious quality there. I think Paqueta's 
maybe not this season, but last season and the season before, one of the best attacking midfielders in the league, maybe even in the world. Jared Bowen, we discussed at length the other day, I think he's probably the best player outside of the top six teams. Mm. And then Mikel Antonio will always, always be a handful. So there's, they have quality there and they can win the game if they just pick the right moments. I think... They're just really, really fragile in defence. Mm. And this Arsenal team will just bully you from any mm. cross, any corner, any set piece. They'll just bully you. So if they're not on the game, they've just got no chance. Yeah, and Jared Bowen's become increasingly important for West Ham. Not because he was always on the end of things under David Moyes, but he's now kind of dictating mm. tempo for West Ham, which is weird. You see him in more central areas, dropping deep and picking up the ball and finding that pass. Um, and you're seeing him as an all-round player now, as opposed to just being a weapon. But like you said, Arsenal, just the physicality is what impresses me. When I watched yeah. Chelsea versus Arsenal in the Premier League for the international break, it was just how physical Arsenal were, mm. how they won every every first and second ball. Like in the air, you can't you can't do anything against them. And so, like you said, despite the fact they're playing away from home, despite the fact they'll be under the lights 5.30 on Saturday at the London Stadium, I just think Arsenal have too much. They'll, they'll play keep away as well. West Ham won't get the ball and then mm. and set pieces, Arsenal will always a threat. I think the problem at the moment when you're coming up against Arsenal is like, when you come up against a City or sometimes when you've come up against a Liverpool, particularly Klopp's Liverpool, you make it hard. You try and make it physical and you make it nasty for the opposition. But Arsenal are nastier than you will be. They're harder than you will be. So it's almost impossible unless you've got some serious quality mm. to get a good result. I know obviously they haven't done that well at the beginning of the season compared to what they, what they were supposed to do. But I do think that is solely down to Odegaard. And now he's back. I just don't think there's a way that West Ham can make it tricky and hard and nasty enough for Arsenal not to be stronger. I thought Forrest would do that. I thought mm, Forrest yeah. would make it horrible and nasty. And I think Arsenal would just... Arsenal would almost like the year 11 against the year 7s. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if this was West Ham and <clears throat> David Moyes, I'd maybe see it slightly differently because I think he'd structure the team better. I think they'd be more compact. They'd be more difficult to break down. Mm. And then they'd use Bowen on the counter. My only problem with Lopetegui has been so far, I don't really know what he's doing. Yeah. Um, at the moment, it just feels like he's got this exact same 11 with a couple of changes to David Moyes. And he throws them out and just hopes something happens. Yeah, 100%. And Arsenal have like shifted the way they press. So there's not as much frontline pressing. Yeah. They allow the opposition to have a ball a little bit more. And then they press from the midfield. Like Really and truly, it's Partey who's... who's kind of refound himself. Obviously, it's a contract year and he's always playing well in a contract yeah. year. But the fact that he's found his legs again has been huge because I think Rice has been a little bit off it. He wasn't that great in the Sport and Lisbon game. But where Arsenal do allow you to have the ball a little bit more, this West Ham team haven't got the ability to pass it around and get through Arsenal. So when it comes to that second or third line press, Arsenal win the ball with their physicality and then they're through. Yeah. Um, and so I just don't see a route to victory for West Ham. It'll be tough. And it's, it's interesting, right? Because West Ham are crying out a more progressive manager like David Moyes is probably the best manager in, in modern history but they wanted something a bit more progressive and they, so they went and appointed Lopetegui it was a bit mm. of a strange one fans haven't really taken to him and it feels like every game like you pointed out he's just trying to find ways to win football matches yeah. rather than implement the philosophy and I don't think that's a way to, to win games consistently in the Premier League I, I, I can't imagine it'll be there for particularly long I oh, think he'll mm. probably be the next one to go I put my head on the line at the beginning of the season and said that West Ham have done by far the best transfer yeah. business. But and it felt looked, like they had to be It felt like they fair. did. Like every like single had. player they had would have been much better under David Moyes. I do think it was a really unusual sign and the fans don't seem to like him particularly. The players don't really seem to be fighting for him. I mean, maybe they did against Newcastle. Maybe that was part of it. But yeah, they look at sixes and sevens, to be honest. I'm really, really surprised that they got him in and he, it's just not working at the moment. And one thing I would say is uh, Wan-Bissaka played a part of that game at left back. I can't remember which part it was against Newcastle, but for whatever reason, it was at left back. I think Kufar, uh, uh, Kufar came on at right back. I wonder if they start Wan Bissaka at left back to stop Saka. Because I think you stop Saka yeah. and you do have a good chance of stopping Arsenal attacking. And Wan Bissaka is the best 1v1 defender. I, I, he hasn't been in recent times, but he's still a lot better than what West Ham have to offer. Emerson against Saka is going to be a long day. Oh, that's going to be a very long day. That's, a, that's an interesting shout, to be fair. Moving Wan Bissaka onto the left hand side. Um, and yeah, you kind of neutralise Saka, but with Saka, he just finds a way. Um, yeah, he he's always now does. become one of these footballers that is inevitable. Like, he'll give you a goal, he'll give you an assist. Obviously, he's on the corners as well, and Arsenal are really dangerous from set pieces. So, yeah, maybe West Ham's best kind of route to victory is to try and neutralise Arsenal's threats, but I just don't see it, man. This Arsenal team got too much quality. It'd be interesting to see if Rice does start. I think they might change up a little bit in midfield. Um, I don't know, he's not been at his best this season. Mm. Of course, he won to play against his former yeah, well, side. He was, he was benched for the uh, Forest game, if yeah. I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. they made uh, yeah. loads of changes in that Forest game. Yeah. I want to see, uh, we're not going to see it from the start. I don't know what you're saying. One year, year. let's yeah. see it, bro. Yeah. Bro, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Yeah. And he showed it. He showed it against Forest. He got the goal. And he's a player that 
he does take he's shots. He's exciting. He's, he's exciting. exciting. Yeah. And Arteta gave him his debut at 15 years old. I want to see more of him. Of course, he occupies a similar spaces to Odegaard. So now Odegaard's back fit. We're not going to see as much of one year as I'd like to. But I want to see more of him because I think that he's the player that has got the ability to go to that next level. Yeah. Um, score predictions? I think 3-1 Arsenal. Oh, you think West Ham are going to score? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to go 3-1 as well. Oh, really? yeah. I'm going to go 2-0. I just can't see West Ham scoring. Yeah.